it's uh, recording. We got the... Oh, no, it isn't. Hold on. Yeah, now it is. Okay, so... Uh, let me F that up. Hold on. Oh, oh, this would be the perfect day for Jeannie if she wants to play. Yeah, you want to play, Jeannie? I would even say, Jeannie, if you want to play... Just say it right here in in uh, chat, and uh, you're in because yeah. you've never gotten to play. And I know it's because you, you know, you'd never want us to hear your voice. Yeah, it's part of the mystery. It's but does mystery. she like Steam games? Is the question. Is she going to play any Steam games? Hmm. Yeah, that's true. I guess she should give those away. Well, Steve might want to play Steam games. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We can't. We don't want to assume anything. Okay. Uh, all right. She doesn't do games. She doesn't, all right. We it. assume puppets. Okay, That's all we think. Maybe we, if we had all some puppets right. to give away, we could do that. We don't have any of that. Yeah, okay. Sorry, no puppets. Um, well, <laughs> Nicole says she'll play. And by Nicole, I mean actual Nicole, not uh, Monica. Oh, good. I was confused. Yeah. You know how I get. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. This is the show. Whoops. Come on, Scott. Record. There you go, buddy. Uh, and uh, begins in three, two, one. When you come in on Monday and you're not feeling real well, does anyone ever say to you, sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays? No. No, man. Less than $2 everywhere. <laughs> The Morning Stream. Two weeks? There's no such thing as two weeks in the news business. Good morning and welcome to TMS. It's January 4th, 2023. I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. Hello, Scott. How are you? Hey, man. I'm okay. Uh, Busy morning. Carter's traveling. We got to pick her up at midnight tonight. A lot going on. Just trying to get stuff ready. Uh, her bed has been slept on by a dog for a whole bunch of nights, and it's gross. So we got to wash her sheets. <laughs> I got to wash that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. we got to do that. Although Carter would probably like it. She misses the smell. Oh yeah, of the dog. like oh my god, this smells like the dog. Yeah, oh. but it'll be good to have her home. So we're excited about that. But a little, just a little jittery and nervous because it's a big travel day. Lots of weird weather around the world, not just here. So it's just like a little, you know, a little tense uh, with all of that. So we may be at the airport. Well, best case scenario, we're at the airport at midnight. Uh, picking her up. Worst case is it gets delayed for some reason and we're at the airport at like 2 or 3 in the morning when that would suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll think of you with your 2.30 in the morning pickup. Please do, yeah. yeah. Been there, done that yeah. recently. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> been a long time since I've been up that late, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how things go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, otherwise, you know, just it's, it's Wednesday. It's fine. Yeah, it's, all it's good. fine. You I know normally, what? It's hump day. It's middle of the week. I normally pay a bunch of attention to CES during the week for CES week, and I haven't at all. Oh, sure. Uh, and Tom will be on today to kind of catch us up on stuff. But I feel woefully behind on it. I don't know what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. what is? was there a big thing this year? What Was it a... Uh, are we all going to have our lives changed by massive technical I think it, leaps? I think it's drones this year, Scott. It's drones. Is it drones? drones are going to be the new thing. Oh, it, uh, man. It's, yes. It's all drones this year. I just learned the other day, you know, that whole that stupid compa- conspiracy that birds aren't real and that they're actually surveillance drones? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, in China, the Chinese government has deployed a whole fleet of drones that mimic birds exactly get out like really flapping wings they look like them they all circle up there and, and and they sometimes other birds of the style they've created will flock with it because they think it's one of theirs <laughs> and then those are surveilling the peoples down there below do they uh, do they were as they as they fly by do they were they go do 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 <laughs> no, nah, they're not. They're not nearly angry enough. But uh, okay. All right. time will tell. Anyway, uh, that was. Some- did we? Did somebody give them the like? Did we give them the idea? And by we, I mean the the stupid conspiracy theorist that started the whole perpetuating yeah. the birds aren't real. Thing. Possibly, but here's the here's the irony of all that. China, the Chinese government, it's surveillance state, right? They go, oh, it, let's say they got that idea. Like, uh, some crazy guy on the internet says this. We should make that. Okay, cool. We made it. Now the crazy people on the internet will just see it as proof that they were right all along. See? Yeah. This yeah, is the right. problem with yeah. crazy people. Oh, yeah, I know. It just p- compounds <sighs> itself. So, well done, everybody. Well done. Humans are dumb. Anyway, uh, so we'll find out when Tom comes on today. We got recommendals. We got a whole bag of cheese today. It's going to be great. We do. Much, much cheese. Before we do any of that, I've been taken to task. Oh, 
Oh, good. Not taking a task. About I just, time. I just have, I just have somebody, you've been taking a task. I have somebody named Jody in Iowa who is just letting us know why the Strange New Worlds thing has, has Trek nerds upset. And it wasn't for the reasons that I thought. I thought it was just because they thought those episodes we talked about yesterday were maybe a little too dumb or, you know, weren't. Mm-hmm. Or, or what yeah, they wanted which was or whatever. My, my case is, it wasn't really dumb. It was just like, eh, really, you're doing a Freaky Friday episode. Come on. You know, and I thought more about that later on because I didn't mind them, but I thought about your yeah. what you said and I realized, you know, back then they had an excuse because they were trying to fill 24 episodes. Yeah. It's like the X Files uh, or any other show <laughs> yeah. that had 24 episodes. You are going to have some filler, fluff, and throwaway. That's just mm-hmm. the way it is. Mm-hmm. With 10, you should have a tight 10. You know, like really yeah. tight. Yeah. So maybe right. they truly believe that was a tight episode. I don't know, but I think I see that perspective. I would if they did on twenty four episodes and one or two were a little off. I get it. It's twenty four. I'd, I'd be a little bit more forgiving. All right, let me ask you this. Yeah, let's say one of the episodes of Severance. Yeah, uh, Adam Scott's character and Christopher Watkins' character had a Freaky Friday thing for for one episode. Oh, it would have really be, sucked. It would have really would you sucked. be disappointed or would you be happy? Well, I'd absolutely be disappointed, but partly because that's a that show isn't that kind of show. Whereas Star Trek has a history of this, right? Uh, right. I still Maybe, I, I still agree I, with you I though. I think Star Trek could say. Hey, you know, see that history back there? We don't need to do all the things that were yeah. in that history. We don't need to have Sherlock Holmes on a holodeck. You know, yeah, no, you're totally, world. you're t- you're absolutely right. That is absolutely a valid point of view, and I think I agree with the whole. Since it's only ten episodes, I think I'm I've come around to the idea that they should that could have been tightened up. Yeah, right? that could have been that could have been left on the. Uh, the, the, the cards on the floor that they had tacked up to the bulletin board. All right, yeah. let's just narrow this down to 10, folks. Just yeah. 10 really good ones. It reminds me of when people complain about Breaking Bad's uh, loose fi- uh, fly, house fly episode. I liked the fly, actually. I did, I, too. I, I liked it, too. Yeah. But a lot of the same complaints. They were like, why would you put this in here? This this stopped the story. It was dumb, and I liked it. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but anyway, they have, actually have a name, right? This kind of episode, it's called something. Uh, um, a pocket episode or something? Or a, something like that, right? Like it's yeah. a... Uh, Shoot, I can't remember that. Oh, what is it? Yeah, I know there's a uh, Randy would be able to tell us a bottle, bottle episode. Is it a bottle That's episode? It. Bottle is that episode. it? I kind of like Pocket. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's I kind of prefer too. Pocket. Anyway, yeah, a so, bottle uh, episode is produced cheaply and restricted in scope to use as few regular cast members, effects, and sets as possible. Bottle episodes are usually shot on sets built for other episodes. Frequently, the main interior sets for a series consist largely of dialogue and scenes for which no special preparations are needed. Okay. And that would that fly one probably qualifies. Kind of. Yeah, no. I still think it was good, but it qualifies. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I it's, mean, it's like a it's like a breaking not breaking the fourth wall, but a a meta episode or something yeah. like that. Whereas this know. story, there's, there's the, got to be a better example. This but. strange new world story episode, though, is the oh, opposite yeah. of yeah. that because it used extra stuff and money they wouldn't have spent. <laughs> right. Yes. On a lot of different stuff, like even just sets were like way more extravagant as a result of their weird combo so i don't know anyway mm-hmm. th- but th- that's not the reason trek nerds are upset it turns out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. here's what jody from iowa says in regards to strange new worlds watch the tos original series episode balance of terror and you will quickly see what trek nerds are upset about so i haven't seen that in a long time i didn't have time to watch it yesterday but i pulled up the wikipedia page on the episode and here's what it is 14th episode of the first season Uh, of Star Trek. Written by Paul Schneider, directed by Vincent McNevity, it doesn't matter. Uh, It aired on December 15th, 1966. Hmm. Uh, In the episode, the USS Enterprise battled a Romulan ship after investigating an unidentified assailant who methodically destroys the Federation outposts in the neutral zone. Uh, They introduced a cloaking device and uh, and the Romulans. This is the first time I got a a shot of that. Right. Uh, Let me skip ahead here a little bit. Um... The episode features the first appearance of Yeoman Janice Rand, uh, who would appear later in the motion picture. Let's see. The episode's events are explored alternate, uh, see, with an alternate future in Star Trek Strange New Worlds in the episode A Quality of Mercy. Is that the final episode? Hold on. Let me just look here. Uh, that okay. is the... Oh, it is the final episode. Oh, you know why Scott doesn't know? Why this is controversial. <laughs> Scotty doesn't know because he hasn't, hasn't watched it yet. Hasn't seen the finale. Kim and I were saving it for tonight. So I nope. could, uh, we're going to watch a bunch of stuff to keep us up before we go get Carter. And uh, <laughs> I guess oh, no. I just don't know yet. So, all right. 
that's actually interesting because now what I'm going to yeah. do is I'm going to watch that TOS episode. Oh, good idea. Now you actually have a little bit of frame of reference to watch that one right before. Totally. Yeah. That is absolutely what I'm going to do. Um, hmm. What do we know? Oh, that's interesting. We have a few in, uh, bits of info on the new season. They got directors picked out. Anyway. Oh, cool. uh, I, okay. So I will withhold any judgment until I've seen it. Yeah. Um, but I remember this is about the point when it was airing live or was airing week to week that uh, Daryl lost his mind on Twitter uh, and said he'll never watch it again. He was all that upset. That makes sense. Okay, that that tracks. You yeah, see, I watched. I did not have a problem with that episode, but uh, but if you're, I guess if you're hardcore TOS, mm -hmm. but 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 isn't isn't Star Trek all assumed to be on different timelines now? You know. Because Kirk, the movie, the Kirk movie stuff took it, it right the Kelvin timeline. Yeah, the, isn't uh, that a yeah. thing? Uh, is is Strange New Worlds? I thought Strange New Worlds was still on the original timeline, though. Maybe so. Maybe that's why they're mad because the final episode maybe. breaks that or something. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. All huh. right, but uh, see, but not having okay. So the earlier episodes of the season feature yeah. about three by my count three maybe more but definitely three characters that didn't exist in that pilot that pike was in sure so they're already there's already liberties you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're like hey we didn't show an engineer what do you want to do how about we invent one how about we have a really cool idea for an engineer like they already do that so it's fine you know what it's star fine. trek fans calm down we're supposed to be logical <laughs> logical reasonable people okay right. what would spock say yes what would spock say unless he was uh, going through pond far neutrino, well i think scott's gonna watch it tonight i was gonna say uh, uh, neutrino said you should watch it for couch party but you're you're watching all that business tonight yeah so we're gonna do it tonight there's no so. time before it to do it i'll report so. tomorrow if it bothered me and i will watch the tos episode because i i want to understand I, yes. wanna, I, I want be, to believe. Yeah, and I want to be in the heart and mind of my fellow Trek friends uh, and sure. understand why they're so upset. Because so far, that show's rad, mm -hmm. and I and I want to keep it going. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, also, I secretly have this theory. And Steve's listening. Hi, Steve. My brother-in-law, Steve. Yeah. He yeah. loves uh, all things Star Trek, always has. Apparently, they absolutely love this show when it aired. And for a while there, Steve had Anzen and Mount's captain pike hair oh really now he was over <laughs> last is, night and i didn't which mention is it awesome hair by it's the way. great hair it's yeah. like amazing yeah. hair and i'm pretty sure steve was rocking that hair i don't know if it was on purpose or whatever steve if you want to you want to you want to cue me in let me know all right brian i think we ought to play don't a game talk to me about the des that deserter by the way oh what oh i know because they're they're moving yeah they're yeah moving. they're moving Jeez. they're moving to mississippi yeah, they're going to buy some. Well, I think they've already put an offer in, but they're going to buy some land, clear it, build mm -hmm. their dream house, uh, try to pretend it's not 4,000 degrees with the humidity, and then live there. <laughs> right. It'll be great. I'm going to miss my nieces yeah. and nephews, but uh, or niece and nephews, but uh, it'll be fine. It'll be good. I'm going to miss them, too, because they just live like three blocks my to my north or to my south, and right. I can go. we can go over there anytime. But nope. Uh, and they'll all be here tomorrow while their open house is happening so that they're not there. They'll be hanging out here. Oh, nice. So yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. It's the chance to get, get out of there so that people can tour the house without awkward people sitting there going, hi. Hello. Oh. What's going on? Yeah, they'll be like <laughs> Daryl in um, Glass Onion. That's not really a spoiler, right? No, God. Oh, dang it, Scott. Dang there's it. A, how could you do that? There's a character in that movie named Daryl. There. That's that's <laughs> <Yes>. the spoiler. <laughs> Uh, Daryl was, is the most unspoilable character in that in that uh, show for sure. He is a thing, right? What do you call it? Movies? He's a not MacGuffin. Uh, a MacGuffin. He's a. I guess he, MacGuffin would have more of a an important plot point. He's a. You thought he did them? Like they, 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 they well, were, that's true. Yeah, maybe that's it. Right? Because he's that, supposed uh, to make you the whole time go. What the frick's going on with this Daryl guy? How yeah. come he? Mm, he's going to play some large role, and then. Well, that's and getting into spoiler sure territory. Yeah. Well, you guys should watch Glass Onion. It's great. Please do. Hurry up before uh, we completely ruin the film for you. Although Brian told me offline his issue, and I agree with it. I've, I've thought about it. Yeah. I think thanks. you're right. It's, it didn't bother me yeah. at first, but the more I thought about it, it's a little it's a little out there. Yeah. Yeah. A little out there. Yeah. Park it, it goes. It goes a little far. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> pushed it a little. Just a little. Pushed it a little too far. Get it? Pushed yeah. it. 
yeah. a little. Different. Oh, Randy tells us, by the way, a breather episode is um, on tvtropes.org. Because you know Randy has stock, I think, in uh, tvtropes.org. He might yeah. even be a part owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's uh, a Love breather that. episode is like The Fly and Breaking Bad and the, uh, like, where they break it and say, here's a completely out of left field kind of thing. Well, would it also qualify as bottle because it didn't have Jesse? It didn't have. It just had. Oh, wait, was Jesse in that one? I don't remember um, if Jesse was in it, but it seemed like it was just Walter White and the Fly and no other characters. Yeah, maybe. Which makes it kind of maybe. both, right? Because you're kind of like. And I wonder if yeah. a community, if there were community episodes that could be considered uh, breather episodes, even though they, they broke the 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 trope or they broke the um, I don't want to say the fourth wall because they did all the time, but they broke convention it seems like starting in season two every chance they got so you can't really that's true can't really account that there are yeah. big swaths of season one i consider breather episodes so there's that <laughs> yeah oh you know be a good example is yeah. um don't blink i know this is one you haven't seen yet but the the don't blink doctor who episode because um that that barely features the doctor and uh and not rose uh who are clara um just barely features the two of them and the care the, the most of the focus is on another character gotcha okay yeah. no these make sense i'm um and and in my opinion one of the best episodes ever of that tv show really a breather yes. that's also good a breather that is a breath of fresh air breather yes. is neither black or white how's that song go ne see either <laughs> Is neither you know the song, right? Oh yes, yeah, either by uh, the sea, either by uh, that uh, all-girl band from the '90s known as Waitresses. Salt? No. Oh, Verucas. No, was it Verucas? Uh, no. Not the waitresses, right? That's I have that wrong. It was. It was the band was Seether, wasn't it? Oh, was it Seether? <laughs> the band. <laughs> it, Ver it was Verucas Salt. Okay. <coughs> All right. I like Verucas Salt. Louise. Hi, <laughs> old men remembering shit when Remember we should be shit. playing a game with Brian Dunaway. That's right. We're going to make that happen right now. Um, as mentioned before, phone number's on the fritz, uh, but we're still going to find a way. Life finds a way. Dunaway is being called in, and uh, we're going to go for it. It's going to be fun. I like Wednesdays for this reason. Yep. And Shane Maddox, you're absolutely correct. The band Seether named themselves after that song. Oh, but, after their own song? Assault. Was oh, the, I get it. Was the band, yeah. Okay, Veruca Salt is, is the band. They do that song. Mm -hmm. Seether mm -hmm. says, hey, we like the name of that song. We're going to name ourselves Seether. Got it. Yes. All right. Can't fight Seether. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that music means that Brian Dunaway's in the house. Clean up, everybody, and make sure that bathroom's closed. It's Brian Dunaway joining us from South Carolina, as he always does on Mondays and Wednesdays. Hi, Brian. How are you? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hi. Hello, Brian. Hey, uh, how are you guys doing this good. Wednesday? Yes, go ahead. Real good. I was just going to tell you uh, what a fun, what a fun look at the alien video games of yore last night on Play Retro. That was fun. That was time. so good. And I was just thinking about the Atari version this morning again. I was thinking, oh. was it that bad? Yes. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's really <laughs> bad. You got to see Confirmed. this, Brian. It was that bad. The Atari Twenty Six Hundred <laughs> version of the Alien. It was the very first Alien game based on any of the film films. And it was basically just Pac-Man. It was a, a little stick person representing, uh, I guess, Ripley, running Ripley, through yeah. a maze of dots, which were supposed to represent eggs. And no then, way. and then, like five, yes. four, the dots your... what? three. There was <laughs> sorry, three. You're right. Three, three, three xenomorphs, was... all different colors, just like they did with the ghosts in Pac-Man, are all chasing you around while you get the dots. Yeah. Now the unique thing was once you cleared the board, even had a you know a power pellet type thing, although they call it a quasar, was it? Yeah, anyway, a pulsar, I think. Pulsar. Yeah. You'd eat that, and then you could eat the <laughs> you could eat the the aliens. Oh, that's horrendous. Yeah. This is like it's scary. I, I think I it's hate every canon. single thing about. Well, here, this. tell me if you hate it worse now that I tell you this. In between matches or in between levels, it turned into Frogger, so you would now have a whole bunch of aliens. <laughs> going back Shut and up. forth and now you had to making stuff I'm up. not kidding we it is absolutely not. true really yeah. yeah it's really bad <laughs> and then you're it's in great. a field of let's call them asteroids yeah. and you had to shoot those <laughs> asteroids yeah and it sounded like this listen to how bad this is <laughs> this is what you had to listen to the whole time yeah yeah because as we know xenomorphs have sirens <laughs> yeah yeah Wee 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 
Uh, it was really bad. Anyway, oh, and, and there goes Acidy mm-hmm. and Face Hugger uh-huh. and, and Clyde. Still, one of them still named Clyde. Clyde. And, and the reason we can't figure out the why. point is, uh, if you're playing uh, Alien video games, play Alien Three for the Super NES. It's a very good game. Or 2014's yeah. Alien Isolation, which is an incredible game. You know, you kids really owe us all, us old folks, a debt of gratitude because we sat through and played these video games and then decided, (laughs) hey, we can do something better. And then we formed new video game companies and made great stuff that you are playing now. And it's because of crap like this that we had to play when we were kids. Yeah, these stepping stones were in the river. We had to get over that river. We had stepping stones. We lived through it. So you don't have to, okay? All right. So now we have games that go animated frame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. It's time for us to play this Alien. game. Um, we're doing it a little bit different today. Brian's still going to explain how it works, what is on the line, and who might actually win. Sure. So well, Brian, take I, it away. Let's pull somebody in first because uh, my thing actually says oh. their name. Or, or I have a, oh, how do I we? Have a, I have a mail merge that has their. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How do we, uh, so, so what are we you doing? have a don't you have a thing that if they type a certain word you can oh, randomly yeah, yeah, yeah. pick from them? Yeah, I can yeah. do that. Uh, I got to pull it up though. Hold on one second. Uh, this things is that called... I probably should have brought up at the beginning or pre pre show. It's all good. Uh, it was all kind of last minute with this. All weird... right, so let let this limit this to people who are typically afraid to call in who who do want to play Steam games, and we got a couple yeah. of good ones. I'll tell you right now, it's the Golf Club 2019 and Morbid the seven acolytes um uh people who don't always get to play and who maybe don't call in because they're afraid of their own voice or nervous to talk to the two and three intimidating guys on the other end of the line for this (laughs) so yeah so let this be one of you all right here it is i'm gonna put in uh, the word is uh we'll keep it simple and it doesn't matter (laughs) if you capitalize (laughs) trpw brian just say not claire yeah not claire (laughs) Yeah. Just go ahead and let it out. Let out what you're trying to say. Uh, yeah. Potato is the word. It can be capital or lowercase. It doesn't matter. P O T A T O. Oh my God! People can't spell potato. Potato. Oh, I don't know. All right. So put is in Dan, the word potato. Uh, Dan Quayle in the uh, in the. Yeah, he's screwed. Well, if he is, he won't win. Put a e on the can't end. Can't spell it. All right. All right. So we got a bunch of potatoes going in. Some of them are spelling it wrong. That's great. We love that. Someone spelled it bacon. Yeah. Someone Captain spelled French Kipper, fry. Put potatoes. Uh, mm. Potatoes, as uh, Sam Wise would say. Uh-huh. All right, that's yeah. a lot. We got a f- okay. I think we got our, yeah, our group. That's good enough. Yeah, that's a good enough sample size. Let's All do right, that. I'm gonna roll it. Here we go. Our winner is Ambassador Domo. Is our player Ambassador, oh, Ambassador Domo? Domo. Yeah, cool. like him. He's good. He's great. He is good. Thank He's, you very uh, much, Ambassador lives, Domo. Mm-hmm. He lives in a haunted, abandoned church in, um. Oh, just outside of Philadelphia, and I'm trying to remember where. But is that yeah. true? He lives in an old yeah, church. Yeah, true. That's true. <gasps> and it's a pokey stop. He Dude, lives. He what? lives in a pokey stop. My that gosh. is crazy. I always want to live gym, in an though, old church. Not a just a stop. I want to live in an old church or an old school. That's Columbia, Columbia, New Jersey. Yes. Oh man, that sounds so cool. <laughs> Freaking love that. I want to live in a house that was built on an Indian graveyard. Yeah. Oh, do you really? Okay. Yeah. Just don't put yeah. it in a swimming pool because I heard that, that gets gross. Yeah, you don't want that. I've seen that movie. It's bad. You don't want that. All right. So uh, let's say it's time to play the Tadpooly feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy <laughs> topics, and Scott and Brian are going to have to predict the answers that they gave us. It's Scott and Brian's job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Ambassador Domo. Oh, he's across the street from a graveyard. Awesome. Ambassador Domo, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian through the magic of chat and typing. If your team wins, you get a prize package that includes, as I've mentioned, the Golf Club 2019 and Morbid, the Seven Acolytes. So I would do something if you guys can't, or I guess whichever one of you ends up uh, getting control of Ambassador Domo, um, do something to highlight his name in chat so that you see anything he types if there's a way oh, to do that oh you know what i screwed that. up so here's what i want to do okay i shouldn't have closed it because what i can do is once once it picked him i get to see yeah. his individual chat the whole time but i oh, didn't think yeah. about staying this is actually a pretty good solution here all right hold it on. Is, yeah. okay yeah. let's do this how am i going to do that though again um if you can. i don't know if you can you know what ambassador domo <laughs> Type the word potato again. Oh, I know what to do. Right. No, don't do that. Show. You'll lose. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Here's what I want to do. Ambassador Domo, where are you in the chat? Let me find you. Uh, I'm going to send you a private message. 
Say something in there so I can see you. Where are you? Uh, okay, there he is. All right, I'm going to say... Here, I'm sending you a whisper. And I'm going to tell him to type this word. Okay, type that, Ambassador Domo. In the chat, not to me. This is so dumb. Yeah. I, forget <laughs> I mean, I've I've got them highlighted because I'm using uh, Textual 7. I can see, like, basically I get a red highlight on anything he types. So I could just tell you. Oh, Why you don't do I have just tell thing? you the things he types? Oh uh, yeah, if you if you've got that, it might be a solution. Although let's just see if he yeah, does. Yeah, that, that's a much yeah. better solution. I want to see if this yeah. works because I was actually perfectly suited, ready to go. I just didn't mm -hmm. know when I closed the tab. Had I known, yeah. his name would no, have been there, and I would have only gotten his responses. But and I didn't think about that being. That's not your fault. I didn't yeah. think about it either. Let's see. Well, sorry, we're out of time. Uh, let's get to our Indie in the middle. I guess we'll <laughs> use his because um, he hasn't typed it yet. I don't know why. Okay, Ambassador so right. Domo, so where are you? He might not be seeing his DMs or something. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Anything, Don't type it in your DM. Type it in, types... the, type it in the main chat, Ambassador Domo. He typed it. In the, okay, there we go. Oh, gotcha. Got okay. it. It's up. Woo! Oh, look at that. Nicely done. Potato cheese. All right. Yeah. We now have yes. anything he says from here on out, I will have perfect view of, so oh, we're good. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. Good. Um, Which means I guess I have to work with him. Brian, and hopefully Brian doesn't get <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Uh, we asked uh, 491 tadpoolers their answer to this question. 18 of them said pass, it's probably because they're young and silly. Uh, hands on buzzers. Name your favorite live action. <laughs> yes, Brian. <laughs> Um, hmm. potato. <laughs> <laughs> you jumped the gun there, didn't you? I uh, like uh, it. Yeah. Sorry, potato, not on the board. I'll repeat the question in full for yeah. Scott. All right. Name your favorite live action. Uh, oops, a reset buzzer. There we go. Live action 80s TV show. Live Dope. live action 80s TV show. Live so, action 80s TV show. Uh, uh, uh Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Show me Knight Rider. Number yeah, three. pretty much finding anything on the board would uh, get you control. So you do have control of Ambassador Domo. Let's see. How do I mark you as play, though? Hmm. Mm, I don't know. Um, so uh, Ambassador Domo, whatever board. you type, I will see, even if you, yeah. even if it gets lost in the mush. Um, I will right. see it. He says 18. By the way. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I want to say we are at a an anniversary, a milestone anniversary. Alkabob, let me know about this today. Uh, this is the today is the two year anniversary of the first time we used the Tadpooly feud board oh, nice. that he created. Very nice. Created. Celebrate, so however, you, uh, to all those who celebrate, enjoy the celebration. Yes, exactly. All right. Anyway, go ahead. He says so, eighteen. Uh, he says eighteen. Let's do eighteen. Okay. A team, show me. Yeah. Nice. Uh, number two on the board. He also very says good. Magnum PI, which I agree with. Let's do Magnum oh, PI. Very right. good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Show me Magnum Pi. Yeah. Number seven. Oh, look the at board. these points, wow. Brian. 12 points. Yeah, he's uh, doing great. Yep. Um, and so the answer is not potato. No. The answer is not potato. Still uh, number one. Still hasn't been claimed. Seven answers still on the board. A team, Knight Rider, Magnum PI have been uh, been selected. I like his new. I like his new answer. Miami audio. Vice. Let's do Miami Ooh, Vice. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, show me. <laughs> that was, the, was, that that? was my Jan Hammer. An yeah. intro to the song by Jan Hammer. <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> show me Miami Vice. Oh, oh man, please. disagree. Hey, Hard disagree. Was... Such a good show. Miami Vice uh, I made know. it all the way up to number 18 in the list from the tab. That board. needed to be higher. It's underappreciated. That's fantastic. Yeah, all right, we'll Dunaway, we'll it's your see chance. What you think once you get to these other ones here. All right. Just because I want to hear I just because I want to hear Ibit uh do his rendition of it. I'm gonna go with chips. Chips. <laughs> Uh, all right, show me your chips. Oh, <laughs> the chips are down. Chips. Come on. Chips number. That's a shot. Uh, tied for last place with one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got potato and chips. 
I was trying to be clever. I guess I wasn't. No, you are not. Clever by half, apparently. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to say the Dukes of Hazard. Ooh, Ooh, just some good old boys who never mean and no harm. All right, okay. Yeah. Show me that that freeze frame uh, jump of the General Lee through the open door of the train passing by. Yeah. Oh, oh wow, that's some Ooh, big points. Can damn. I even win now? I don't know. Uh, wow. Yeah, you totally can still. Yeah, totally can still. All right. Um, uh, Ambassador Domo, you just type away if you have one. I'm going to say the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk. Oh, oh sure. The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible dun, Hulk. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 it started in the dun, 70s, dun, but it went into the 80s. That counts, right? I it mean, did. Yeah, it definitely, okay. uh, definitely counts. All right, show me... The Incredible Hulk, trapped in a world he never created, yeah. and guided by the force to... No, I don't know. Show me Incredible Hulk. <laughs> oh, shit. Really? You wouldn't like me when I'm confused about the intro music. Oh, uh, crap. Well, you had the music good. Do, 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 do. You did that. Yeah. That wasn't that wasn't the Walk and Way music. That wasn't the... Uh, mm. Uh, that was uh, the intro music was. Oh yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> and then he's trying to change the tire in the rain. Right, you know oh, he's gonna Hulk his, out. And his shirt rips, and he looks up and goes, yeah. Yeah. "Hulk, don't drive cars." Uh, you better. If those of you uh, who've watched the most recent Disney Plus Marvel program get, have a new appreciation for all that stuff, I'm sure. Damn straight. All right, Dunaway. See if you can take it. Yep, Dunaway. I'm control. Still trying to think of a potato joke. I can't think of more potato jokes. I'm gonna have to go with Simon and Simon. Do that thing. Oh, you sure. love Simon and Simon. You love it. I do love Simon and Simon. Yeah. One guy's Simon, the other guy is Simon, <laughs> and they are together. They are Simon and, and Simon. Simon. And when they met, it I was Mida. <laughs> it was Mida. All I wanted was you to try to sing the Simon and Simon song. <laughs> yeah, even if you get this wrong, you actually won the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> Because you got Brian to do that. And Simon. (laughs) We're Simon. And Simon. All right. Show me Simon and Simon. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. After all that. Simon made it all the way up to number also tied for last place. Um, No, get out of here. You're full of crap. Ambassador Domo offers up uh, MacGyver. I like this one. Let's say MacGyver. Oh, sure. That's a good one. That's a good one. He's uh, making some things with... Ordinary materials, MacGyver. Yeah, it's because I only know the MacGruber theme. Yeah, <laughs> show yeah. me MacGyver. Yeah. Oh, yeah, number four. Nice. I don't think that means I've won yet, but we're getting there. Uh, let's see. He also says Airwolf. Airwolf. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Let's try Airwolf. Airwolf. Wolf. Wolf, Brian. Airwolf. All right, show me Airwolf. Don't. Asked me to sing whatever the theme song was of that. Right? Make, the, make the noise. Number nine. Oh, that's oh, no, good. You almost had a Scott. Did you flip no, you're supposed to say, oh, that was Blue Thunder. You should say, uh, uh, you got 50 bucks and we'd know who you meant. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. go. Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> nice. All right. All wow. Right. Four answers left on the board. Oh, Scott, the only person to name 80s live action <laughs> TV shows. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, how about, uh, did we do? We did Magnum. Okay. Um, oh, we'll Brian's favorite uh, show. Show. Uh, it's late though. Late, late eighties. I don't know if you're gonna. Are you? Do you? Ha- okay. I have a judge I, question. Yeah, I'll tell you the answer when uh, to any question like this. It's whatever the tadpole says. Ah, shit. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna say Quantum Leap because. Quantum Leap oh, started in like '88 or '9 or something. Sure. So hoping every leap. Will be the leap home. Oh. Number six. All right. Nice. Ooh, that makes me wonder. Hmm. You know what? So far, none of these are comedies. I've noticed. I mean, some of them are Ooh. funny-ish. You know, like Magnum PI and yeah. Simon and Simon. Well, it's not on there, but those are have. I comedy. find Dukes of Hazard and action. the A Team <laughs> and Knight Rider extremely funny, but not for any reason right. that they intended. Right, but you don't. This, I mean, you this, said. This could be you comedies. Said action, even though that implies no. I said live action. Animated. He just means live. Yeah, not well, animated. Said. Yeah, yeah. Live which it implies, but maybe people thought the action was part of the, the oh, question, gotcha. the action just, part. Just, it uh, makes me think that because most of these are that, you know. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm, now I'm thinking if I veer too far from action or from drama, we're going to be in trouble. Um, all right, let me check on Domo here. Um, okay. He doesn't have Domo. any new ones. How about... Oh, shit. That's animated. I can't do that. Uh, I can't think of anything. Uh, 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 Hardcastle and McCormick. <laughs> I don't oh know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it's All not right, going to be on there. Uh, show me Hardcastle and McCormick. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> Let's just get this out of the way. Uh, Hardcastle yeah. and McCormick, oh, surprisingly, never even made it uh, into any list yeah. at any time ever. I'm okay. shocked. Uh, Brian. Shocked by that. Here's your uh, chance. Uh, 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 TNG, the Star Trek, the the Next Generation. Oh, that did Short start in 89, yeah? 1987, I thought. Oh, I thought it was 89. Yeah. Do I have, I have it you, you know yours better than I do, so I'll, I'd go with you over me. But uh, well, I'm not sure show me TNG. Number one answer. Oh, on my board. gosh. I'm going to look nice. it up just to be check. Oh, you, Brian. Ding. 1987 is correct. Oh, cool. Yeah, yep. there we go. Beat me on the dates. Nice job. That's actually, just that surprises me. One I thought it was, time out of a thousand. There you go. It's weird to think I was in high school when that started. Weird. Okay. Anyway. So were you then, I guess, right? We were still in high school. Right. We were seniors. Right. Oh, weird. That's right. We were. Yeah. Yep. When we were seniors. All right, Dunaway. You're, you've still got a chance. <laughs> Um, I, I like to watch the greatest American hero. So even if it's not up there, I won't feel justified until I say it. So uh, greatest American hero. And you can sing right. that one because that's the easy sure. song. I don't want to give it to you. Look at what's happening to Brian. He's about to get a big strike. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I always Poor thought the guy in that show was over. the... I always thought it was the same totally guy that was it. in um uh what was the what was the naked Brooke Shields movie? You uh, thought Cat Williams Blue, you thought Cat Williams Blue was Lagoon? Blue was Lagoon. Not. I always thought the Blue Lagoon yeah. guy oh, was this guy. Yeah. And then I also thought that same guy you know, was Kirk's Atkins. son in Wrath of Khan. I thought all of those were the same guy. You basically no, thought you there thought was any only one color, actor with a blonde Jufro yeah. in the eighties. Yeah. And yeah. you thought just yeah, uh-huh. I did. I don't know why I yeah. thought that. It's so dumb now. Chris Fractons, William Cat, and I don't know who the actor is that played uh, Kirk's son. But, no, uh, yeah, not sure. Yeah. He was yeah. all right, though. Anyway. Uh, all right. Well, congratulations first. Going out to Ambassador Domo. Well done, Domo. Congratulations. Uh, will, Domo. You're I've got your email winner. address. Oh, yeah. sorry. Well, no, you're fine. So I will, I will email you your prizes. Uh, congratulations. Let's see what these last two answers were. You guys really... Early on, said or not early on, Riptide. but decided to stay away from uh, comedies, Jammies, sitcoms. Like, cheers. Yeah. Like what, Brian? Oh, cheers. Cheers, you there. say? Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. I mean, and, that deserves uh, to be there, but it's just so different than the rest of these. It does, yeah. And uh, number eight, the Golden yeah. Girls. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, really? Yeah. Did people Damn really it. say that? I or just that. were they trying to poke at Brian Ibbett, who does not so far like the Golden Girls? Was that they, like that? I think that, no, I think that genuinely people, that is a show that people do love. And I think if you saw it in, at the time and and had appreciation for it, you would love that show. And I think watching it now, having never seen a single episode, it's like, okay, yeah, it's all right. Well, this is a perfect. I, it's definitely, I'd never. Certainly would never say I hated it. I just it just uh, I thought all right. Well, if I've got thirty minutes, there are other things that I that I need to watch. Well, this is as good a time as any. Um, Nicole Spag sent me for Christmas little Golden Girls mini figs. Oh right, yeah. You took them out of your box. Did you stab them with a screwdriver or scissors Aww. like you did your Tron? No, but I should have made yeah, a video. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why it was what I was thinking. But look at this. Uh, we got all look of at them. That. Uh, my favorite trivia was always the, the oldest. They was smell actually, like soup. She was actually the youngest. No, they don't smell yeah. like soup. They smell like oh, okay. they smell like Chinese child labor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love them though. Well done. Absolutely well done. love those. I'm gonna keep them by me. Uh, uh, well I'm gonna done. go down the rest of the list really quick here. Number eleven: Alf, Mash, Night Court, mm. Full House, Battlestar Galactica, Fraggle Rock. Where, uh, married with Children, Seinfeld did start tech. No, 1990. Yeah. I think, was it was, it, episode, yeah. wasn't it? Or was I it, it was 89? Was it? Was it 89? Might have been. Uh, family it ties, <clears throat> moonlighting. Mm-hmm. Somebody that's somebody trying to get get on my good side with that one. Yeah, yeah. Perfect yeah. strangers, Remington Steel. Nobody had that as a favorite show. Roseanne, Double Dare, <laughs> Little House on the Prairie, Mister Rogers Neighborhood, Scarecrow, and Mrs. King. <laughs> Square ah. Pegs, The Cosby Show, Ooh. The Wonder Years. 
Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So, so no Riptide? The, uh, no Riptide. <laughs> who's the boss in 21 Jump Street nope. rounding out the uh, the top of the list there? Uh, I was just, so when I, if I do a search right now for best yeah. 80s TV shows on IMDb, you know, they do their list and stuff. Yeah. They have yeah. the weirdest listing. It's, they have number one, 21 Jump Street. Number two, Booker. The hell is Booker? Booker. Uh, Booker. TJ Booker. Oh, it was a spinoff. It was a spinoff from Twenty One Jump Street. I guess I never saw it. Oh, oh, right. Um, yeah, wasn't that uh, what's his face's character uh, who went on De- to Deluise. Full House? No, Richard Greco. Deluise, I think. Yeah, oh, Richard Greco. That's it. Yeah. Yes. And then MacGyver, Street Hawk. Oh my gosh, uh, this yeah, list is Hawk. F. This list is no Manimal. No, no, Manimal is on. No. About, oh wait, about, I'm sorry. I take about, it back. Manimal is on here at like 36 or something. Okay. Yeah. Is that a but user created list or is that a, is that a IMDb created list? I assume someone made this. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, so here it is. AI. DV Spice. Yeah, I don't trust that guy. Mm. Don't trust DV Spice. Anyway, yeah, congratulations, know. Ambassador Domo. And uh, yeah. you know what you got to do. Just send Brian an email. Covervillagemail.com. He asked prizes, steam codes. Yes, the answer is yes. Yes, prizes, steam codes. Yeah. <laughs> it just says prizes, steam codes, question. And the, I live in church across from <laughs> across from a graveyard, across from cemetery. Yeah, I live in a, a pokey stop. Uh, that was amazing. That actually worked pretty well. I kind of like this. Um, anyway, if our phone yeah. thing ever goes down again or we don't have a better solution, we'll uh, we know what we have to do. Exactly. I like I like <clears> hearing <throat> their voices, but sometimes I just don't want to hear their voices. Yeah, so sometimes I think it's, it's a great the worst. Option. Do you really want to hear them go? Prices, steam codes. We don't want to hear that. Not <laughs> just kidding well, ambassador domo yeah. congratulations and well done brian Dun- uh, dunaway well done uh, to you as well sir and uh boy howdy uh what's for film sack this weekend i don't even know what are we doing uh, we man. are doing uh, finally moonfall oh yeah moonfall oh that's right that yeah. we've waited thing. years to watch moonfall and yeah we waited a, we get to watch moonfall. we watched the whole we waited six months to see we moonfall. waited uh. we waited a year to watch Moonfall. <laughs> That's right. 2022's incredible, well-reviewed Moonfall. Uh, that'll be uh, next or this weekend. So watch for that. Dunaway, anything else you want yeah. to tell us? Uh, no, I'm just uh, glad to see you guys this week. Uh, didn't get to see you Monday and uh, didn't get to see you a lot over the holidays like I wanted to. So it's good to be back in uh, 2023. Is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New yeah. year. Yeah. I like it. Well. <laughs> 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 goodbye all right uh there you go that's that we're gonna take a break speaking of breaks when we come back right. tom merritt will be here we'll talk a little tech that'll be fun and uh after that some recommendals with randy nicole me and brian that'll be fun too yeah, we be can fun. Uh, we can promise nothing but fun from here on out but first we need a song would you please play one please sure big thanks to earshot media and ring records for letting me know about this one this is a band called that summer they're L.A.-based, and they've got a brand-new single that features Steve Ferrone, a uh, drummer, I believe, for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Really cool. Their debut album is coming out this year. I can say this year now, even though this PR release came out uh, last year. Um, their forthcoming full length is coming out, and what's it going to be called? I don't know, but uh, the song is called We've Already Said Goodbye. Here is that summer. Uh, very nice. Let's play it now. For some reason, this got all hung up, but I don't know why. Let me just fix that. Okay, we're good. All right, that's it. Uh, but here's the song. We'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned. His name is Brian. Along with 16 other hill children, he's on a bus trip to the zoo. $1.95 per minute for entertainment only. Under 18, get permission. The Morning Stream. You are under arrest. You have the right to remain disgusting. And we've returned. Uh, Do tell who that was one more time. I will. That band is called That Summer, and their brand new album, their debut LP, is going to be coming out in 2023. That song is called We've Already Said Goodbye. So even though I haven't heard it, I already know I'll like it. Uh, and mm-hmm, I, I think mm-hmm. it was rad in retrospect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Future spec. In, uh, in future spec. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Future spec. That's a movie title. We need to name that. That is uh, somebody. I think AMC Plus needs to get on that because that feels like an AMC show. That does actually. Uh, yeah. All right, we are going to get in it to win it here with Mr. Tom Merritt. With the computer, as with any tool, the concept and direction must come from the man. 
That man is Tom Merritt. He joins us today on a very busy CES Consumer Electronics Show week uh, going on uh, uh, crazily, as it usually does in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, Tom Merritt. Welcome back to the show. Well, hello, Scott and Brian, and Happy New Year to you both. Oh, yeah, man. First time we've talked to you since uh, the year turned over. I know, over. Yeah. yeah. Well, it feels good, I can tell you now. It does. I was it worried. Does. I was worried all morning, but now I feel fine about it. It's all good now. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I could finally uh, put your mind at ease. Uh, lots of great CES stuff that we'll be talking about on Daily Tech News Show. Mm. Yesterday, we talked about the new NVIDIA. Uh, it's not mid-range because it's still really expensive. It's like $799, but uh, really good uh, GPU that's not nearly as crazy expensive as the other ones. Uh, Intel's new uh, 13th gen chips for, for laptops. We explained all that on yesterday's show. Today, we've got big LG announcement that that's just wrapping up uh, right now. Uh, but uh, I would like to talk to you about your urine. Oh, please. Oh, I would it's like to also. Time, yeah. okay. I've known this I've known this chat was going to be coming for a long time, <laughs> Tom. So go I, ahead. Uh, I brought mine with me in this nice container. So tell me what I need to know. <laughs> it's, it, is that nice container your body? Yeah, I, pee, uh, I peed well, in this. I'm good. Uh, one, one of the many top items being shown off at CES is the Withings U scan, spelled with the letter U dash scan. Uh, U meaning you, but also you meaning urine. Uh, you mount it on your toilet. Uh, you then pee on it. Yeah. Uh, they say, however you want to pee on it is fine. Uh, it has sensors, not cameras, okay? Just just get that out of the way. Not ca- It has sensors that can identify individuals based on infrared and uh position of the stream etc really so that it knows when it's you that way you can use it on a family toilet uh and it can just test your urine uh and then it has cartridges each cartridge has about 100 tests in it so it lasts about three months and one of the cartridges does uh, cycle syncing, so menstrual cycle. Uh, you can detect things like ovulation and and the you know period of your period and all of that sort of thing. Mm. And then the NutriBalance cartridge, which does uh, measures ketones, vitamin C, pH, and hydration. Each each one of these comes with one of uh, one of each of those cartridges, and then you have to buy extras uh, if you want to keep them going. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's. A smart app, of course, uses yeah. Wi-Fi, uh, sends the results to to an app, and and then you can see uh, how many ketones you've got or whatever kinda, you want. I kind of like that. Yeah. yeah, is it fully FDA approved? I mean, it's a thing I can. It is not. Okay. It is approved for Europe, uh, and will go on sale in Q2. It is and that's awaiting. spelled U dash R U P. Yeah. <laughs> Urine. U rope. Yeah. yeah. I won't. I w- I just won't. Uh, U.S. FDA <laughs> approval pending. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. I, I mean, um, you know, there's always talk about smartwatches getting to start doing things like uh, A1C tests and, you know, more more of this stuff at home. I'm kind of all for yeah. it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, why not? I did see a commercial for something that did the that does the um, the COVID test, like just a little thing you'll keep in your house that, uh-huh. that'll do your COVID testing. And uh, it's like, is that where? So that's where we are now. That's where we've gotten to. Is that like a reusable test, like a test yeah, that? Yeah, oh. it's a reusable test. Interesting. Yeah. So you just, you huh. just go, ramp, 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 you know, yeah. stick this thing in a little hole, and it tells you. On the one hand, I like that. On, on the, the other hand, on I'm the like, daily, whether or not you have COVID. Sure, but what it tells me, on the other hand, that they 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 are counting on it being a problem for a really long time, and yeah, oh yeah, they're banking well, on it. There's yeah. there's certain places that need to do daily tests and it, and it's wasteful. Yeah. So you know being able to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and sense. see, I like this. I I think this is something that that sure we get this in our house as regular technology, but I would love to see it just built into future toilets going forward. Oh yeah. Because this is the uh-huh. technology that we've been promised since Star Trek, and I don't mean the TV show. I mean the Star Trek experience at the Las Vegas Hilton, <laughs> yeah. where you go into the bathroom, and as you're standing in the urinal, it tells you analyzing your pee and tells uh, you like what you're what you're low on and what you need more. I of. didn't know that did that. I never went yes. in there. I mean, That's great. Really. It was, it was it the was, best. It was the. <laughs> it was the best reason to go to the. It Star always told me I needed to order more food from the from the. <laughs> right. Why bar? not order yeah. another beverage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get more in here. I mean, it does. Yeah. It You're is probably beer. <laughs> this is probably the future of. Um, I don't know bio biotech self test future that we're all yeah. heading toward. And I'm all for it, actually, because then you can detect stuff that you would never go in and have looked at because you're not having any any kind of like overt, 
you know, let's say your ketones are on a really high rise. Well, why? Well, normally you wouldn't even know. You just pee and you're yeah. and you're out. That you get a reading like that, it's like, oh, I better go look. And they can detect all sorts of weird things, like cancers that are just starting, early detection. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm all in on this. Like our, mm-hmm. if we're gonna have a bad look, okay, I'm gonna say something controversial here. If this country is gonna continue to have a, let's call it a difficult healthcare system, then give us more tools, not just to self-analyze. I don't mean self-diagnose, but you know, do tests like this so that we can make smarter decisions about when we're seeing our doctors and when mm-hmm. we're not. I think that's awesome. Like, do it across the board. I think that's great. Check my poop for stuff. You find a little blood in yeah. there, let me know. Yeah. You know? I think mean, Seriously, I, I'm really, I am so 100% in favor of this. Yeah. Uh, Withings is too. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are waiting, they're waiting on approval for medical usage in Europe. You, they, they're allowed to sell it as a home thing with the warning of like, shouldn't be used as a diagnostic aid, et cetera. This is just for your own personal knowledge. Uh, but but they haven't got medical approval. They do have uh, a separate product that Rich Straffolino told me about because he's there at CES. I, that's it's sort of a puck for doctor prescribed tests. Mm. So in other words, not something you'd have to have in your home like the U scan. It would be a thing the doctor would say, "Hey, take this, you know, attach it to your your toilet or whatever, uh, and and it'll it'll test for like you're talking about, Scott, like things like cancer or or things where you're like, oh, you have a risk factor for this. You're at this age. Let's let's test that. So yeah, I just Withings is is trying to be more than. And a watch. <laughs> they're, they're really moving into other aspects of, of, of healthcare here, which is which is really interesting. Uh, very different from Japan's aroma player that you wear around your neck and sprays you with scents that you program to sync with video. Oh my, with video. Uh, well, I suppose any video, yeah. any video you want, any video you've got on your 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 computer or YouTube. Uh, I, I was unclear on whether they're pitching this to creators to, to be able to put out there. I think they're really pitching it to home users to try to build scale there. So you'd have to program it yourself. <laughs> well, what if a <laughs> guy, the- so what if you got, you got a video of a guy, if it's a fail video of a guy face planting in a pig farm. Sure. I, you can program your how stinky that would be if you wanted. From- uh, you could. Uh, that wouldn't be what I would choose. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not I guess gonna yuck your yum. I always, I always end up thinking the extremes here, but that does sound like something somebody somewhere is going to try to. Well, for the, yeah. some of the examples they give is it can do like campfire. So if if you've got a, a video where there's a scene where they they light a campfire, the campfire scent could, could kind of you can program it to come out or yeah. or baking bread baking. if you're watching. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. So that makes or sense. Any food, uh, right? Yeah. But if you're okay, that's interesting. So it's smell o vision. It's the early days, but it's yeah, smell o vision. Right. Yeah. I mean, and they've been trying to make this happen for decades. I remember back there in the dot com boom, there was the, the, this kind of thing like, oh, you could have scents triggered by the web. When you go to a website, smell the web. Smell the web. Uh, oh, my gosh. I do not want to uh, smell the so, web. So this is another in the lineage of that. I'm not convinced we want to do this. Uh, no. I don't want to smell so, the web. I don't want to smell no, there's gonna be There's going to be a lot of TV shows that I stop watching if they automatically trigger <laughs> sense. <laughs> that is the smart thing that Aroma Player is doing is you do the programming. Oh, so you're in good. control so you can actually program your own. of okay, what good. triggers the so sense. So I can make what the smell. golden girl smell like soup if I want to. Yeah, you absolutely could. It's a little could. bit of a novelty, but yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. So All if right. you if you got the face plant in the pig farm, you could replace it with like <laughs> I, lavender or something. It doesn't I have to be. I kind of do that oh, now yeah, by just making idea. soup while I watch the golden girls. <laughs> that's true, but that's yeah. so analog, or man. You got to get the you future. <laughs> buy this big thing you wear around your neck while you're watching a video. Your, your call. Oh, you could smell what the if, great what British. What soup for you, though? Red Fraggle says you could smell the great British baking show. That's a great idea. Oh, now yeah. I'm, I'm in for that. Yeah, that sounds really good. Uh, and, and I don't want to smell Paul Hollywood. No, I was going to say, you want to smell his aftershave or whatever he's putting on oh, no way God. dude yeah you know you know now, slathers that on yeah too. i do hate to bring this up because we did just talk about that withings product but what would the morning stream smell like oh we don't want to oh, we don't want to sure. explore that uh, do we? I i'd like know. to it think would, it smell like puppies. It would, <laughs> yeah it would smell like, <laughs> <laughs> or at least or at least opium yeah. it would smell like uh loss of memory and uh yeah uh, potatoes and yeah. potatoes there you go that's a quite I'll a combo. potatoes would be nice. Yum, yeah. yum, yum. Uh, well, this is uh, fascinating as usual. And I, it's one of the things I love about CES, C, CES week, rather, is Tom, yeah. uh, they, they, they not only go for the big stuff, but they also find the odd little things around the edges. And I love that. If you want to catch that coverage, make sure you are on the daily at dailytechnoshow.com. 
Tom, anything else going on that uh, is? I know you're, you know, you get very busy with this uh, CES business, but uh, you know, you got a lot yeah, of projects. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to mention that uh, you know, I mentioned Rich Straffolino is at CES. He and Amos are there uh, for Daily Tech News Show. And if you want to see what they've been up to, uh, you got to follow our TikTok. Uh, they've been posting uh, on the Daily Tech News Show TikTok. Uh, so just look for Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and you you'll get to see the U U scan. Not exactly in action, but you'll see that they have it, uh, and 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 they talked about it. There's there's a uh, watch called the No Watch, which is just it's just a health tracker, but they called it No Watch because okay. it doesn't have a watch on it. I don't right. know. Rich explains it better than I do. So go check out Daily Tech News Show at TikTok. Uh, the uh, the the No Watch sounds like Pet Rock from the '70s for some reason. Yeah, it's like it's, <laughs> it's not really a watch. Than that, yeah. But, yeah, it probably is more expensive than that. Anyway, Tom Barrett, uh, Ace Detect on Twitter. And always a pleasure to have you here. We look forward to a brand new year of uh, Tom's Tech Time right here on the show. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, happy new year, everybody. See you soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye, Thomas. Wait a minute. I can't have. I can't find. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my God, that was. Funny. <sighs> and no one's called him Thomas since his mother raised him. I guess. Anyway, hey, uh, <laughs> guess what else, everybody? Uh, it's the time of the show where we do recommendals and. Uh, That's right. Takes me a second to pull everybody in here, so just one moment, please, while I do that. Uh, yeah, I'll play a little. Uh, I'll sing a little. Uh, recommendals. It's time for us to figure out things that we watched and spoil them. I mean, I'm not going to be able. To work, I'm not going to be able to watch Simon and Simon again without hearing you do that. So. <laughs> you pretty much, pretty much I said it. In, yeah. yeah, you said it in stone. Hey, look at that. That music means it's time for recommendals. We take stuff we've seen on streaming services and we recommend them to you, the listener, uh, and also give you a quick and easy way to go find out what we talked about later in case you forget. Uh, joining us today, Nicole Spag. Welcome back. Yay, I'm here. Yay, Yay you're here. I'm so glad. I am too. Oh, kind of a rough holiday gosh. season for uh, for Nicole. Hasn't been hasn't been. Yeah, great. and and dare I say, I think podcasting saved my life. Oh gosh, wow, no kidding. That's good. Specifically, the podcast America's Next Top Podcaster. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. Make sure so you I, listen to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, first season. Uh, and Brian, if you ever need me to come back to that show, I am more than happy to. I oh, have, really? uh, yeah. Okay. I, uh, I, I went through some some stuff. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to just say uh, a heartfelt thank to Dr. Jerry, who I met on uh, America's Next Top Podcaster. So yeah. he's awesome. I, uh, he yeah. Awesome. yeah. So I had a, cool. a bacterial infection in my nervous system. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Everyone always thinks, oh, you had a cold or you had a thing. But no, this thing's like all up in your no. like neurons. Serious business, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's scary. So, that's scary. I'm it, glad it didn't turn yeah. into like some kind of meningitis like uh, brain infection or something. That would have well, been terrible. Well, that's, I mean, that's what that's I was. That's where it was headed. Or rheumatic fever. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but the problem is you were talking about our medical system. I recently moved. I don't have a PCP here. Right. I could not get in to see one until February. Oh, geez. And I was actively just deteriorating my mental. Like, I went through a whole mental health issue. I, it was, it was I bad. have a greater appreciation for everyone going through uh, mental health. So, yeah, it's called Pandas. And they only have really researched it in children. But adults can get it, too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very rare. Lucky me. Is that why they so, call it pandas? Because they're rare. Is that why they can't? Like they, they pandas no, are rare. No, it's it, it stands for like pediatric. It's a, your autoimmune system attacking oh. itself. Oh, okay. Um, and it does all this weird stuff. And I had a really sudden onset of it. And Mark was like, "What's going on?" And I thought I was going to be in a mental institution <laughs> last month. Oh man, so, yeah, that's nasty. Yeah. They also call it pans. I guess it's a. Uh... There's pans whole... pandas yeah it's all and it's all when you get a so i had a strep a infection yeah that yeah it's crazy well, so it's amazing just, what uh what uh you know just knowing a guy like dr tolbert is uh 
Mm-hmm. Yes. is already cool but boy it sounds like it was a big deal for you so that's awesome yeah, yeah. it was crazy it so increases I'm, his coolness factor yeah i'm so so happy to be here <laughs> oh, i'm glad to have we you back too. Uh, yes. we also have with us randy jordan aka randy jordan joining us hello randy how was your vacation up in uh, hoo-ha land up there in good canada good morning morning stream i am back I, you know why i'm back because after nicole went down the nfl told me to take five minutes mm. and get ready to play again so i'm back oh, i good. took five minutes oh good thank you NFL. I'm glad you and, did. Good job. And yeah, I've got uh, I've got a whole new year of things. Like yeah. there's this whole new year of, of things. We're gonna a whole we're gonna, new year. Yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been looking at movies. We're gonna we're gonna sack and ooh. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, we got good a, stuff. we do have a great list of movies uh, ahead of us. Some of them we've sure. been trying to do for years, and there oh. they are. I'm very excited oh. about that. Uh, well, it's good to have you here as well. We're going to dive straight in here. We're going to start with Brian, as is the tradition with his recommendal. Yeah. Brian, set this clip up before I play it. This uh, this clip is about a couple of guys who are uh, doing a little bit of feuding. Well, one of them doing a little bit of feuding with the other one. And um, uh, there's some, there's some uh, accents in here that you'll immediately uh recognize i believe especially one of our <laughs> tadpoolers mm. uh but we need to find out why these two are feuding all right here we go i suppose i best go talk to him so see what all this is fecking about that would be the best thing now i'm sitting here next to you and if you're going back inside i'm following you inside and if you're going home i'm following you there too now if i've done something to you just tell me what I've done to you. And if I said something to you, maybe I said something when I was drunk and I've forgotten it, but I don't think I said something when I was drunk and I've forgotten it. But if I did, then tell me what it was. And I'll say sorry for that too, Colin. Uh, with all my heart, I'll say sorry. Just stop running away from me like some fool of a moody school child. But you didn't say anything to me. And you didn't do anything to me. Well, that's what I was thinking, like. I just don't like you no more. You do like me. I don't. You liked me yesterday. Oh, did I? Yeah. I thought you did. <laughs> I've been dying to see this. I know what it is, yeah. but tell tell the folks why this it is. It is awesome. The Banshees of Inisherin, which is a uh, a tale that comes to us from 19 uh, 23, well, it takes place in 1923, and a couple of guys who live in this small village on a small fictional island outside of uh, Ireland, uh, uh, and uh, one of them just decides that uh, they don't like the other anymore. And those two voices you're hearing are indeed are uh, in Bruges actors being paired up again with the writer and director of in Bruges. Uh, did I say in Bruges? In Bruges actors and in Bruges director. Colin Farrell, Brendan, Blendon, Brendan. And Blendon. <laughs> He's Blendon Gleason. He's Blendon both Gleason and Farrell. Nice. Uh, Brendan Gleason. <clears throat> and uh, you even get uh, Mike Roman Trout's daughter, Carrie Condon, uh, in here as well. Mm. Oh, from the sh- the uh, from the show from from uh, Better Call Saul, yeah, and Breaking Bad. Oh, did not realize that she was Irish all this time. No so idea. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the, you find out, you know, the, this, this little feud is happening here in the very beginning of the show or in the very beginning of the movie. So it's not, uh, uh, not a spoiler for me to play that clip, but it's, uh, the things that happen over the next 114 minutes of the film, um, are both, uh, surprising and, uh, in some cases shocking and devastating. Mm. <laughs> so. This feels like a lock for a oscar this or a nomination it, this year. it is on, on a lot of people's lists already for uh for oscar watch for best picture and for um uh for best original screenplay for a lot of that stuff yeah mm. and is it so i've seen in bruges like 10 times i love that movie um yeah is it same s- feel okay okay because I, I love it there's something about I don't know if it's just an Irish filmmaker thing or I don't know what's going on there, but there's magic in everything that guy directs. And there really is. It's like those know. three, you put those three together and they can't help but make something that's fantastic. This actually, I'm just learning right now, the film got the most nominations out of anything at the Golden Globe Awards that are coming up. So, Oh, awesome. that's good. I'd forgotten. I've been, I've been holding off those. on watching okay. this movie yeah. okay. because um, don't anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna watch it. Oh, I'm gonna watch it. I'm just trying to brace myself and trying to get into the right emotional state because oh, okay. um, Scott said he'd watched in Bruges a lot. I've watched three billboards outside of Missouri a lot, 
and um that movie uh it's just like every time i watch it i, I just can't believe the layers and the things and so like my question about banshees of Innersham is is this does this movie have some other actors in it who turn in incredible performances yes it, nobody okay. nobody in here um uh turns in a bad a bad performance the other person that is kind of featured most prominently is a kid named barry keoghan um he is apparently really popular in ireland he was in the uh the green knight which i haven't seen yet but i think both of you no i want to though i've been dying to see that it's got that guy i love from game of thrones in it and the witch and stuff yeah amazing um dunkirk he was in but he is on the the list uh ireland's own list of uh greatest uh, Irish actors and um and he's really good in this and uh um it is you know what it's got and and I'm, again I'm not trying to pander to you Scott but it's got a very Fargo feel where and you heard in that clip where yeah if I've said something I don't know what I've said but if I've said something I'm sorry for saying something but yeah. if I've done something I'm sorry for down, doing something as well yeah. you know it's uh it's a lot of that sort of thing and uh I would just like to point out your Irish accent is better <laughs> than daniel craig's Southern it's pretty accent. good <laughs> it's not bad i agree it comes from watching really this movie impressed. recently by the way yeah. ask me to do it in about two weeks when i've forgotten about yeah. all the right. the intricacies of impersonating the irish accent um colin uh, farrell having quite a year though the guy was that insane transformation transformation for the penguin he was incredible in 13 lives which i, I think i recommended last week mm-hmm. he is in this like colin farrell having a moment and he all of those, really all, all of it yeah. is getting, all of it got raves, including these two roles, 13 Lives and this, I think might net him possible double nominations. Like he's that good in I'm, 13 I'm Lives. I'm ready to ask Colin Farrell to be our new Mel Gibson. Let's I'd do like it. I'd like him to be our new, our new Mel Gibson daddy. Let's uh, do it. Let's have him in. Yeah. Let's get yeah. it going. <laughs> he needs to make some movies and then, and then he's got the trifecta going. That'd be great. Right, um, but exactly. that's that's awesome. I'm I'm very excited to see this. this is what HBO Max, I guess, or HBO Max. Yeah. Unless you're, it's funny if you're out of the country, if you're in the UK or Australia, I believe you can watch this on Disney Plus out there. And then I've even seen um, Hulu listing listing it, and I don't know which countries it's available in uh, uh, for Hulu. So um, wherever you can find it, watch it. But here in the US, HBO Max is is where you. Uh, where you watch it. So if you want to see Mad Eye Moody go up against Bullseye, this is your chance. All right. <laughs> That's right. So with, with one of the Eternals uh helping, oh, right. uh, helping along, yeah. <laughs> I almost watched it in Canada. It was on I think it was on Apple TV in Canada. Yes, Apple TV in Canada. As part of like not even a pay extra for it. That's weird. Yeah. It's not but it's not an Apple TV plus original like like nope. uh, no, Emancipation no, no, no. or something. Nope. Okay. Searchlight Pictures. So it was Interesting. Just, it just happened to be released on a different streaming service in every country of the world. Yeah. It's and pretty boy, good. what an what an establishment moment for Martin McDonough. That guy is just like Yeah. You know, he can do anything now. He, he can doesn't make, make any bad, movie he wants. He doesn't to make. make bad movies. He's not it's not even in his soul to make a bad film. He he just doesn't know how. Yeah. And if you haven't seen him Bruges, I'd love that movie oh, so much. It should be yeah. It should be uh, next on your list if you haven't seen that, and then watch watch yeah, this. Watch them both. I don't know. I don't know which multitude of streaming services in Bruges is on, but uh, and, and that one in Bruges is on. I didn't put this at the end. Settle down. Yeah, Bruges. In Bruges. Uh, nicely done. Uh, so go check that out, uh, Nicole. Let's do you next. Uh, you watched a thing Kim and I watched, and uh, we should play your clip. Watched, you have anything you want to say? A lot. I watched a lot of things in bed. <laughs> <laughs> did they? Met, did you feel like? Uh, uh, when I so when I tried to watch stuff with COVID, it just felt heinous. Did, was it like that with um, you? Be, so before I got on antibiotics, that that was one of my symptoms that I was like, something's wrong. I can't, mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't play Borderlands, Tiny Tina. I couldn't yeah. watch a show. I could I couldn't like I was just all over the place. Mm-hmm. And so when I started the antibiotics, I actually was able to watch a show I was able to watch a movie and I was able to focus on it um so that was like one of my oh I'm I'm getting better <laughs> signs and um but I had to be really careful with what I watched um cuz I, I I could uh I had to watch fun stuff yeah so well, sure. glass glass onion and this show were <laughs> my saviors in my darkest time so oh, wow I have, good yeah yeah I love by the way we we seemed we, it may seem like we besmirched 
um, Daniel Craig's accent in Knives Out and in Glass Onion, but I actually love how ridiculous yes, it is. I, I absolutely am besmirching that accent. <laughs> I think it's I think they it's could amazing have, they could have though. Created if, such a fantastic character if they just let him talk how he normally talks. Oh, I don't know and about instead, that. Instead, it's just like constant. You're constantly taken. Out I of need the, the foghorn Leghorn. I like it. I'm yeah, diamond yeah. hard disagree with this you on is, that. This is me defending the uh, the over the topness of the. Daniel Craig, Glass Onion. He also and, uh, said one of the wisest things I've seen in movies in the last two years. He said, uh, he was talking to the character played by, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, uh, Catherine Hahn. No, the other one. Um, uh, 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 from uh, Inf- Infamous. Janelle Monet. No, f- almost famous is what I'm trying to say. What's her name? Oh, oh Kate, uh, Hudson. Kate, Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. He's talking to Kate Hudson. She says, <laughs> she goes, I'm a truth teller. People can't handle it. And she's like, you know, big influencer person. And he goes, mm-hmm. What did he say? He says, uh, oh, yeah. it's a dangerous thing to confuse speaking without thinking with truth telling or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, right. And that really yeah, stuck with me, man. I was like, yeah, yeah, preach it, you weird accented British man. All right. Uh, Nicole, let's uh, let's play your clip uh, here. Yep. Uh, and, and no setup for this. Or you want to just play it or how you want to do it? It's just wonderful. And it was weird that I was watching it on Christmas and I didn't care. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. Here it is. Welcome to the quad. It's a pentagon. The whole snarky goth girl thing might have worked at Normie school, but here things are different. Let me give you a wiki on Nevermore's social scene. I'm not interested in participating in tribal adolescent cliches. Well, then use it to fuel your obviously bottomless pit of disdain. There are many flavors of outcasts here, but the four main cliques are fangs, furs, stoners, and scales. Those are the fangs, AKA vampires. Some of them have literally been here for decades. That bunch of knuckleheads are furs, AKA werewolves, like me. Full moons get pretty loud around here. That's when furs like wolf out. I suggest you pick up some noise canceling headphones. I'm assuming scales are sirens. You catch on quick. And that girl, Bianca Barclay, is the closest thing Nevermore has to royalty. All right. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's Wednesday. No, it really it's is Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it really Wednesday. is Wednesday. Wednesday what? on Wednesday. So what did you, yeah. how did you feel about this thing? I was so surprised how much I liked it. I didn't think I was going to. I, yeah, I love that we went. I mean, the original Adams show, uh, what Adams Family, was. Family. it was silly. It was goofy. It was... Yeah. You know, it came out around the same time as the Munsters, and it was just, I don't know. It was just a lot of just silliness, whereas when uh, Christina Ricci uh, did the movie, that kind of turned it a little bit more serious, right? That was like the Mm -hmm. first step in kind of making that world a little bit more serious. And this, to me, is building upon that and just diving deeper into the characters and giving them complex layers. And I just, I love the world that they created from this show Mm -hmm. and I want to be in, I want it more after I finished it and I loved all of it. (laughs) And it was a murder. It was a, it was a murder mystery. It was a whodunit. And it was just, I loved it. So, and I know the tadpole has been screaming at us, recommend Wednesday, recommend yeah. Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just really happy that I got to, well, got a chance I, to watch it. And I want to point out that uh, the town that takes place in Jericho, Vermont, is where I was uh, the oh, weekend really? before Christmas, where my was dad it, and stepmom live. Yeah. Was it creepy? And, was it creepy and it doesn't look anything like uh, it does in, in Wednesday, I'm afraid. <laughs> mm. yeah. It never does. Yeah. No, and it was filmed, in This the Wednesday was uh, surprising it was planned to be filmed in Canada they decided to film it in Romania because it was cheaper than filming in Canada so Romania becoming the new whoa <laughs> Romania is becoming the new Canada for filming mm-hmm. nice the, they, they, they're they arresting that weirdo I forgot his name that Andrew Tate guy and making cool shows that's awesome <laughs> making cool shows exactly. uh, so I got a question about something oh I know what I was going to say so there when people say Scott are you jealous of anything like really jealous of anything in, the, in life like your whole life is there anybody anything you're just super jealous of and here's my answer and it's always been this answer i'm jealous of cartoonists who whose work explodes and this is an example of that um the original comic strip created by charles Mm -hmm. adams was what back in the 
fifties, forties, whatever it was. Um, to see a thing like that go all the steps it went, including a television show, multiple animated things, the movies you mentioned in the nineties. And then this, of course, is such a cool thing. I cannot imagine a cooler thing to, to, for people to say about your, about your freaking pencil to paper work. Yeah. Uh, Walt no Disney's kidding. very similar. Like there's a lot of examples of this and I just love it every time it happens. And what's funny is I think they, they, the TV show veered away from the weird, darker aspects of the comic strip. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, and somewhat the movies, but this in particular, it feels like it brought it kind of back, but also expanded it to be this weird mystery detective show that where, she, you know, yeah. Wednesday's kind of the head mm-hmm. detective. She's all kind of weird and broken, but she might be the smartest thing in the, in the town. And we loved every second of it. Kim and I absolutely loved the show. It was really, really did good. You, did you happen to watch the Rob Zombie uh, version of the Munsters? No, I missed that. So the Munsters, I don't uh, know a ton about the Munsters, except the Munsters, I guess, was kind of a copycat attempt uh, well, for the Adams Family. When but. you start kind of diving down the hole of what came first, the mm-hmm. Munsters or the Adams Family, they came out the same year. Mm-hmm. And so then you have to kind of go back to what you were saying. Okay, when was the idea? When did that? And that's where the comics come in. And mm-hmm. so depending on how you, who you talk to, some will say the Munsters were first and then others were like, no, no, no. The concept of the Adams family was first because it was a comic. Right. And, right. and so there's like, I hate it. The Rob Zombie Munsters movie. Oh, I didn't really? see it. Was it, was it? <laughs> I hated it so much. I, people didn't like it, but was it like, what, tell me why it was so bad. Was it just that they didn't get it? Was it just too violent or something? Like, I don't know what no, Rob Zombie's no, doing. No, it wasn't violent at all. It was kooky and ridiculous. And I watched like the first 20 minutes going, what's going on? Like, they just kind of, I felt like they just dropped me into a story that I had no idea what was happening. And I, we watched like 30 minutes of it. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I don't. I don't need any more of this. Uh, that's I too did bad. Not like it. At I was all. afraid I, to watch it because I just didn't want it to be so. I didn't want it to be lame. And it sounds it's, like it's lame. Yeah. I, I mean, mm. it. Yeah, watch Wednesday. Don't watch the Munster new Munster movie. And it was around Halloween too, so I was like, "Ooh, ooh Halloween!" And I had a. I have a fondness of the Munsters, the old TV show, and I just it was so. The plot was. I mean, I, I get it. It's the Munsters. <laughs> But it was yeah. just all over the place and fractured, and it made no sense. So we didn't talk a lot about the cast, but Jenna Ortega as Wednesday is awesome, of course. But mm-hmm. I really she's the, was she's the reason to watch the show. Oh, this I agree. Jenna, she's this is she's Jenna so Ortega's good. big coming out party. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, not since her Disney days has she had this level of uh, uh, focus. I guess she's having a moment. Mm-hmm. But Gwendolyn Christie's the one that blew my mind. She plays the principal, mm-hmm. and she yeah. is so. Oh, I love her. Brienne of Tarth. Yeah, yeah she's God, so not. Her. She's so not Brienne of Tarth in this. Yeah, uh, or yeah. or I guess the only thing everyone knows her from is um, the character from Star Wars. What was she called? Right, there? forgot uh, the name. She's. Uh, you never uh, saw her face though. Silver Stormtrooper. Silver Surfer Stormtrooper. That's Phasma, the one. That's right. Yes. Phasma. Yeah, she's uh, mm-hmm. a cool cool role, but didn't have to do much. But in here, she's just delectably great i really like her just wonderful. yeah lots of other great people as well i really like um mm-hmm. some of the supporting family stuff like i thought the luis guzman oh, choice was going to be weird best casting ever you look at the original mm-hmm. charles adams uh drawings and luis guzman is the closest we've ever gotten to the gomez look yeah yeah it's great uncle uncle fester is huge perfect. chicken in the bucket with uncle fester he shows yeah. up and is just placed somewhere and forgotten yeah it's that so weird that is weird since he's so he's such a focus of the comic the show and the previous movies i thought he'd have he a gets, bigger role here but he gets the first half of an episode like episode six or something he gets yeah. the first half and it's all about him and then he's gone and it's portlandia forgotten. guy right um uh, Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen. Yeah. Oh, Fred Armisen. Yeah. yeah. It's really good, you guys. When Nicole is right to recommend this, it's damn good. And I'm glad it was there for you on Christmas Day. Me as, too. As weird yeah. as that sounds. <laughs> Sorry to say we're not getting a season two. I mean, what? Uh, yeah. Deadline reported yesterday that this show, uh, so there was an MGM Amazon merger uh, like last year. <laughs> And uh, the show was made before the merger, and they didn't they didn't buy it. It wasn't included, so it's it's over on Netflix, and Netflix is, hasn't 
ordered a second that's season. That's weird. This thing performed can't. so well. It like did it was yeah. there yeah. it beat uh what what are the ones that beat um the Bridgerton record is broken by it. Uh there what? was some other I thing. Didn't see that. Yeah, it was like a huge deal. It was like number one on their uh their list thing for weeks. So my guess is it'll happen, but maybe it won't happen there. Maybe MGM you know got what? bought by Amazon, so maybe Amazon gets season two. I don't know. Because they've they, set it up as a school season. So like it's like alternative to Harry Potter, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? Yeah. Like so that season is beautiful contained in in that in that season. And I, that's why I'm looking forward to what next semester would be like. <laughs> so I found a yeah, thing that says it Wednesday, nice. it says we've all heard Netflix has officially given the green light to, to season two on December 16th, but they have yet to officially announce it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's fine. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, hope so. uh, the yeah. report yesterday was that no one has ordered a second season of this show and it would need to be Amazon uh, ordering it for Prime, which um, doesn't look like it's going to All right, what do we have to send in? It's, we got to sign a petition. <laughs> um, oh, we didn't even mention Christina Ricci is in is is in this. Oh yeah, she's great yeah. in this. Oh, that's a Ricci surprise, is Scott. Scott. Oh, yeah, she's great in it. As is uh, Ricky Lindholm, who is uh, a member of the band Garfunkel and Oates. Oh no way, that's great. A comedy band. Oh yeah, yeah. she plays the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist. Yeah. I love her. I forgot she was in it. I yeah. don't want to spoil it. So there's there's a lot of things to say about everybody you're naming. Like that's, that's yeah, we won't say it too much. Um, Catherine Zeta Jones is great as Morticia. I, I thought that was going to be weird. I actually think she's great in that mm-hmm. role. So anyway, do, do not uh, wait on this. It's very good. Even if there's no season two, it's worth watching. Season mm-hmm. one. Uh, Randy, let's roll over to you here. Uh, I got a clip for you, and no idea what it is. What do you want to set up here? It's a TV series that's uh, been around for a couple years now, and it's just one of the best things ever. And it was really hard to pull a clip for, for this thing because it's got a lot of empty space. You're supposed to look at this show. You're supposed to watch the carefully constructed shots. And the spaces are for you to laugh when it's funny and, and to contemplate when it's not funny at all. Anyway, um, it's about some uh, young people. They're all like 17. And uh, in this episode, this clip I pulled from uh, one of the characters has been sent to a juvenile detention house and mm. he is stuck there and his friends have uh showed up to try to break him out <laughs> but, nice. but i don't know to try to get him to jump off the roof and oh. go with them. all right this sounds fascinating i'm hitting play now nice What are you guys doing here? Get your shit, bro. We're busting you out of here. I don't think that's how that works. Come on, man. Sauce Let's go. How did I even get out? It's a parkour, man. Hey, Jackie. What's up? What's, what, where's Alora? She's doing her shit. Guards, bro. Let's go. Let's go, bro. I got time for the Chester, shit. Parkour you better fucking be up there. Shit, the house manager's coming back. What are you still doing up there? We gotta go. Jump down. What? Come on. No. Man, I'll catch you. I got upper body strength, bro. No, I mean, it's illegal. I know. All right. You guys gotta find another way love this show so much yeah it's so, so good. good and uh we're talking about reservation dogs it's um i didn't expect its second season to be able to really even follow the first because the first season it, it, it like it like closes a bunch of stories but mm-hmm. wow um so uh taika waititi and sterling harjo uh came together to uh you know produce this story of teenagers and and every other generation it's not just about these uh these main characters but uh, a a bunch of people on the res in oklahoma and it's uh, it's the kind of uh the kind of show that just has never been on tv before it's on hulu uh reservation dogs just is so steeped in uh oklahoma reservation life that it it's not like anything else. It's a, one of the one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it's it's so real and it's so uncommon, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really good. It's Taika Waititi uh, with who's the other creator? Crap, I forgot. Uh, Star Sterlin Harjo. Yes, that's the um, name. Uh, Sterlin Harjo was uh, uh, the creator of uh, another. Yeah, it's something good, and um, I forgot. Uh. Oh crap! Uh, anyway, he's kind of your brain here. Like uh, Taika mm-hmm. Waititi is obviously, you know, an important part of the mix. But I think it's really uh, Harjo that is your man. He's your guy that's that's right. making this they, thing happen. They they, they bring in a bunch of uh, uh, seasoned 
TV directors uh, for each episode. And like I say, they really steer hard into the, this is written by Native Americans, starring Native Americans, or uh, in some cases, a, a bunch of the stars are uh, First Nations Canadians. Um, and and the stories are all just uh, 100% about uh, that experience. They, they do not at all, uh, you know, even touch on out, you know stories outside of uh, the reservation that they're all living on. Even though they sometimes leave it and go into the rest of the world, but they go right back. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's something special, and I love the cast. My favorite in there is uh, the guy that played Hansi in season two of Fargo. Um, in this, he's the sheriff, <laughs> and I can't find his name. I'd love oh Zon McLaren McLaren. I think is how you say his name. He plays Big freaking love him so much i could just I, oh, I, watch that guy eat a, a eclair in the sun i don't care whatever <laughs> officer big officer big is one of those things i was talking about like if you read a description of reservation dogs it's going to say it's about four teenagers in the reservation well it's uh, it's actually about a more like eight teenagers and uh it's about all of the other people too there's there's whole episodes given over to o officer big like in in the middle of the second season there's a, an episode where officer big accidentally ingests some uh some drugs some hallucinogen and it goes on a, a wild trip and uh it like he's awesome he's such a good actor like yeah, he's great. you know he he, he was a, if you're not if you if anyone out there saw Doctor Sleep and none of this other stuff he was also in that he was one of the I don't know what you call the people that were touched they all had the shin and <laughs> right yeah, yeah. Um, he's great in that he's never not good but if you've never seen season two of Fargo you're missing out man and in this it's just like such a turn for him oh also um uh, it was it was a, he was an officer in uh, oh what's what's the Wyoming modern western Katie Sackhoff was in it. Oh, uh, Longmire? Longmire. He's in Longmire yeah. as well. Cool. Just a great actor and eats up the screen. And, and this is such a self-effacing role. And it's a it's a wonderful show, Randy. I'm glad you brought this one. That's good. Yeah. 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 And, Nicole, uh, Nicole did recommend this back in September of 2021, but it deserves being recommended the, again. Oh, the second yeah. season is just shockingly good. Like, I really had lowered my expectations for the second season. Oh, and it, really? And wow. it really beat them. Like, like hands down, it's better than the first, in, in my opinion. That doesn't always Although, happen. I, I get that feeling of like, oh, this is too good the first season. How are they going to top this? And then somehow some shows do, and it's and, it, and it's great. And it's as much as I, you know, I just said it's it's entirely Native American. They're also like, they don't pretend that there aren't other kinds of people coming and going right so like the doctor at their at their local clinic is played by bobby lee right he's obviously not native american but he's a, a doctor who you know he he's originally from somewhere else he's been assigned to work here and he's uh not he's a very much a fish out of water you know what i mean yeah, yeah um yeah. there's an uh there's this one uh sort of nearly main character and I'm forgetting his name. Uh, he uh, he's uh, the guy here. Kirk Fox is the actor. Um, he plays a guy named Kenny, who uh, is a white guy who's lived his whole life on the reservation and thinks of himself as native, but no one else does. <laughs> and he's always wearing a bone choker or feather in his hair or something. And they hate this guy, but he's just like, he's cool and nice to them. And it's, it's just like this choice role for this, you know, character actor. Which yeah. I love this show so it's, much. I it's hope so good. everybody can season, watch it. Season three happening. Do we know? Is that a deal? Yes, for sure. Yeah. It's already, I think it's already wrapped. I think okay. they wrapped season three. Oh, one tiny role cool. that I just want to mention. I haven't seen season two yet, so I don't know where he ends up in this. Me, but yeah, the, me neither. The, uh, the character played by, um, oh, what's the comedian's name? Uh, Bobby. <sighs> Shit. He yeah, used to... Bobby Lee. Who Bobby just Lee named? plays that doctor. Yeah unbelievably perfect role for bobby lee bobby lee can only be taken in like kind of dose small doses like he's that kind of comedian and and also actor i guess when he does stuff i can't take too much bobby lee he's yeah. he's really oh did you bring up bobby lee i'm sorry I read yeah, on their and, line there's a, and there's an episode Dang uh it. where there's an episode <laughs> in the second season where all of the middle-aged women in the show uh, go with him to some kind of medical conference mm. in, in some resort in Arizona. Yeah. 
and uh, again, just this, he gets the most amazing appearance that you will see in this series. And it's just like, it's a throwaway joke. It's only this guy could do it. He's like, I, I can't imagine anyone else being asked to do what Bobby Lee does and doing it with a straight face. It's awesome. Well, thank you for enduring my red on air light for that one. That was, I enjoyed that. Uh, no oh, and uh, uh, the the woman who plays Tannis on Letterkenny has an occasional appearance in this show. Um, as she like it's the least amount of screen time you can have, but she just like I just love that the the natives from Letterkenny <laughs> are are showing up on on Reservation Dogs. Oh, there's a new season of that too. I gotta watch that. Letterkenny just dropped a new one. Yeah, they're doing um, that every uh, Christmas now. That's a that's been like three straight years. I wondered oh, if really? they were gonna delay, not delay, but just have a bigger break because of um, um, Shorzy. And I thought, I don't know, I thought I that think, would mess up. Production. I think Letterkenny is about to end. I think they're gonna call something the last season. You can't, you know, you can't have Bonnie McMurray uh, become <laughs> get into her forties. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? No, like, you can't. No, I don't want Bonnie McMurray to age at all. She's lovely. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh all right. Let's uh let's dive into my weird one. I picked a weird one, guys. Um I was what? gonna recommend you? I, I know weird. I was gonna recommend the English, and I still do highly. Um it'll be a side recommendal here today. It's a series on Prime, it's a Western. If you like Westerns, you'll love it. Uh go watch it. The reason I'm not fully recommending it is because I found a documentary that just jumped out of me uh to the point that I was like, I gotta do this this week. So Consider, uh, consider yourselves um, at least uh, alerted to the fact that the English is great and it's on Prime. But let's hear this clip and I'll tell you about it. Jerry's parents are alive, but because of his muscular dystrophy oh, and emotional problems, my they parents, didn't want him. My parents were ashamed to go out because of me. They were ashamed to take me out, you know. It's like, it's like I was the black sheep of the family, it's like. All right, that's a short clip. Uh, I found this documentary just screwing around on Netflix or on uh, YouTube, and um, it turns out trying to there's no great quality filter for documentaries on YouTube. It, it ranges from some really good stuff to terrible homemade stuff that's just really hard to watch to things that are just conspiracy theories and stupid. Like it's all over the map, just like you would imagine YouTube being. Um, but there's this documentary on there called Children of Darkness from 1983. And I was interested because it basically, and it won some, a bunch of awards then. Um, it's only an hour or something. And it's uh, it takes a look at the current state of mental health of and how we treated kids with mental health issues in the late 70s and early 80s. Of course, this is an 83, so you know, I was basically a 12-year-old kid, 13-year-old kid then. And um, so they show a bunch of kids that were basically my age, young teenagers or, or preteens that had any array of issues um severe autism which we didn't understand that well in the early 80s obviously to you know major schizophrenic episodes people are really violent that sort of thing um and they also during a section of this just touch on kids who just are you know, not necessarily suffering from um mental deficiencies but are just rebellious and horrible and you know come from affluent families yet are, you know, just alcoholics and drug addicts and all this kind of stuff. So they, they kind of lump that all together, but I found it utterly fascinating because it was this really raw look at the way this stuff was being handled then. And it was a reminder that as, as easy as it is in our modern day to say, mental health should be a bigger priority. We're not very good at handling this, blah, blah, blah. Like all that kind of stuff. Uh, history actually matters, even recent history like this, because in the early 80s, man, we sucked at this, like really bad at this to the point that we were just putting them in hospitals and like taping them to chairs and not letting them get up. Like it was just like a bad time. Yeah. And so much has improved. And I just found it weirdly cathartic to see this chronicle of the old way of doing it versus now doesn't mean we don't have room to go. We absolutely do. It's not what I'm saying. We haven't solved it, but we have come a long way um, in terms of mostly understanding it and then treating it and understanding how to deal with this stuff. Some of these kids were probably just fine in almost every way with maybe one or two quirks. It was really these horrible boomer parents 
sorry to sh- <laughs> blanket the whole generation, but <laughs> these horrible parents that were just like that last kid that was talking that just either abandoned these kids or just acted like they were this horrible eyesore and they couldn't take them anywhere because they were so embarrassed by them, full on just like abandoning them to the system. Um, I know that stuff still happens today. My sister's a, not only a psychologist, but worked in social care for for years and years. So she knows all about this stuff and has seen the worst of it. So I know it still happens, but it was there is a sizable jump in quality of care since the early 80s. And I thought it was fascinating. So if you want to see a thing that's well-made and old and just gives you kind of a peek into an, a different time uh, that very quickly is becoming ancient, <laughs> uh, yeah. look for it on on YouTube. It's 100% free. It's not a thing you have to subscribe for. It's just called Children of Darkness. When it was originally put out, it was like a – it wasn't PBS, but it was a publicly funded type thing like that. They, were, they had some endowments of the arts and stuff like that to make it. Um, even this guy's voice. Jerry's parents are a lot. You've heard that dude before. Like, God, everything. Yeah. yeah, all that old old school <laughs> stuff. Anyway, it's really good and super interesting. Yeah, the Greystone Psychiatric Hospital in New Jersey. They talk about that. They talk about the North, Northern New York um, hospital that was in big trouble then for three or th- two or three kids died in a row. That they just horrible, horrible mistreatment of these kids. And it's not focused on that per se. It's also focused on the challenge that these kids actually represent and how to deal with it. It then sent me on a, a rabbit hole where I was like, well, where are these kids now? I want to find some of them. And some of them, some mm-hmm. of the worst cases are are okay today because they found a way. Like this one guy is like 53 and they show him in this thing. He is, I, I don't know how they thought he was going to be, they were going to have to give him the lobotomy. That was really that they were considering, oh, which is a thing you can't even do anymore. But at the time, it was still on the table and they figured it out the right treatment, the right drug plans, the right doctors, the right whatever. And now he's, you know, a guy in his fifties with, still has issues, but he's happy and he's productive and he's, you know, he's got family that cares about him. Like that was cathartic. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. Um, do check it out. Oh, the guy that narrated it passed. Yeah. Sad. Peter Thomas. Peter That's Thomas. a hero of mine. And what's crazy about Peter Thomas is you recognize his voice. He only ever did two things. He did Nova and he did forensic files. Yeah. But that, lots like, of Nova like, though, right? Nova all yes, the time. Like, yeah. Like, yes, he, ne- this guy, <laughs> this guy got a lot of work out of two series. Yeah. 70 <laughs> years was his, uh, his career. It says here on his Wikipedia page and he died in 2016 at the age of 91. Well done, Peter Thomas. Oh, you did it. Um, anyway, could not recommend it enough. It's just, um, I don't know. Once in a while, I find a weird thing and I want to recommend it, which I think recommend. Watch that. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I, I, I bet you there was a lot of kids in there with pandas too, which uh, is. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Because they all, it, it, there was a lot of it where there was actually some, they showcased some adults who were trying to help these kids who were really trying, like really trying to be there. Mm-hmm. Some of them donating their time and all that. But you could tell a lot of them just. They don't have much to grasp onto. They're just sort of mm-hmm. like, well, we're managing, we're dealing, we're trying to calm them down. We're, you know, but it's all very, very erratic yeah. and not focused. And I don't well, know. Well, that's the thing with pandas. It's flare ups. It's you think the kid's OK. And then uh, either another illness, extreme stress. These all can as- exacerbate the nervous system mm-hmm. and then it causes them to go into just ugh. And, it, and it all starts with a strep infection right like yes just strep unbelievable yep. and, and I, uh, so mateo had strep too um we both tested positive for strep a yeah um and then so he's on a course of antibiotics because it actually all started with him yeah he was pretty and messed I, up for a few he went down later. he went down really fast yeah and we were like what's going on so now my biggest my biggest hurdle is finding a doctor that's experience and understanding of pans pandas and hasn't just read about it in a textbook because most doctors if you say anything they've never experienced it Is it because it's just rare or whatever or that or people chalk it up to other conditions is that why they they chalk it up to mental so like here's here's some zoloft here's some xanax here's like Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, well. yeah. It's it's a it's a and it's tough because I mean I went through it. There were times where I'm like, am I going crazy? Like, is what's going on? Yeah, yeah. So oh. think if you're a child and you're having the and this, this things happening to you, you don't know how to explain it. Yeah, that that actually is interesting given some of the trajectory of the kids they follow in this documentary because some of mm-hmm. them 
uh, in some cases almost miraculously are just fine soon. So when you get yeah. older, the idea is that your immune system gets stronger and a lot in a lot of cases, those kids can grow out of pandas because the immune system will take care of the infection. Yeah. So there's oh, like wow. there's all kinds of with it. That's why they don't think it can happen in adults. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. Case in point. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, those are our recommendals today. If you guys want to follow what we watched and you missed the names. We put them all up on uh, quicktms.ly. And when I say we, I mean Brian, very dutifully back there. Mm-hmm. Putting they're, that already, up there. they're already there. Thank you for that. Uh, and links if, and all. Yep, yeah. links straight to the stuff. So go check it out. If you got your own recommendals, uh, please send them in. We'd love to hear about them. Themorningstream at gmail.com. Uh, it's always great talking to you guys. Happy New Year, yeah. by the way. To Happy New you. Year. Yeah. Happy healthy New Year. Yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> may we all never have pandas unless they're cute and furry. Okay, that's what Even we want. Then. Those are the kind Love we want. Just don't want them ever. No, never ever. Buy now. All right. All right. They've left the building, but that doesn't mean we're done. Here's what means eh, we're done. Kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read a thing about the Smiths reference that you made. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. This is a text. Uh, we like to get your text at eight zero one four seven one zero four six two. That's still working. So please uh, continue to send those in. Here's one from. Let's see. This is Nick from Springfield, Massachusetts, who says. I'm having a really shitty day. And the Morrissey slash Smith's poll by Brian had me crying. Probably uh, part vent, but also legit hilarious. Been a while since I've heard that one. Thanks, guys. Uh, Nick. So, yeah, your whole... Yeah, yeah Panic on the Streets of London with whatever we were talking about that day. Yeah, yeah. that was great. So you made somebody's day better. Good job. Oh, good. Yeah. That always well, we're about to make somebody's worse with this next text. Yeah, this next text, <laughs> perhaps less so. Uh, this is Dan. He says, hey, guys, quick question for Brian. Why does he say, yeah, the way he does? I'm not sure what he even means, but we'll get to I it. I don't know either. I was hoping I was hoping you knew. Like, I don't actually know. He says, says yeah. my manager does the same thing when I, asked him, uh, when I asked him. He says it was from some robot on an old TV show. Love the show, though, Dan. I don't know. How do you say, yeah? I don't know. Because I'm trying to think if there's, if there's a way that I say, yeah, when I'm referring to something else that comes from like a... Uh, you know, like I'm imitating something else, right? Yeah, or something yeah. like that. But I don't know. I don't know what. I don't yeah. know when I do it. Claire's, yeah, Claire's typing. Yeah, like that. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you I don't, don't do know. That. Yeah, we need some context for for sure. Yeah, uh, give September. us a timestamp or send me a clip or something. Um, I'm yeah, happy to exactly. explore. It further. If somebody can capture the yeah that that he's referring to. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, because I have no idea. I just said yeah. Is that it? Me saying yeah? <laughs> Maybe he's yeah. got me confused. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the know. ticket. Um, all right. Uh, by the way, uh, the September typing in the chat room reminded me. Uh, uh, hope you're feeling better. I saw you got the vid. The uh, the it gets all of us, even those of us who hold out as long as you did. Mm-hmm. It's coming around. That for circle all of us. closes for all of us in our fake Fortnite COVID world. So I'm sad right, to hear exactly. that you got it. I didn't know that September got it. Boo. Yeah. Boo. It's gonna get you too. Another one's got the vid. That's right. Dear, dear, dear. Uh, hopefully none of you get it. I'd love that. I don't think that's possible, but I hope I hope no one else gets it. Mm-hmm. There's a weird uh, new variant floating around, and China's a mess. They're like locked down again. China's all left up. <sighs> oh right. Yeah. Well, you know they've got that. their birds. They've got their uh, robot birds. Yeah, they got bird drones. Out. Yeah, it'll be fine. They can see yeah, what's bird up. Bird drones. Yeah. yeah. They can surveil their people without their knowledge. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. 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 Maybe. Is that the yeah? Now you're going to wonder about every yeah you do. I'm going to wonder about every yeah I do. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that sucks. Well, he'll let us know. Uh, if you want to send us those texts, you can. 801-471-0462. And if you are in the mood, we'd love it if you hopped over to patreon.com slash TMS and sign up for all the goodness that can be found there. Your favorite morning show cannot survive without your support directly at patreon.com slash TMS. We're now out of here and done, but we can't leave until Brian plays a song. Brian, play a song. Okay, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I've lost the... Oh, I bet it's in the 12. Here we go. Um, I was like, oh, no, I've lost the... uh, 
the the, the uh, description, the actual person writing in because I didn't highlight it. Now I found See it. What Jill all this wrote is in. About. See what it's fecking about. Sorry, go ahead. Jill Jill fecking Snowden wrote in and said, <laughs> <laughs> "I love. Uh, I, I feel like all right. We can say fecking. Oh, all we the can time totally now, say fecking. We yeah, feck, I feck did all originally day. send you by the way a version of that clip with the the fecking bleeped out. Oh, you did bleep it. No, that's I totally did. Fine. I did bleep it, but then I gave you a new version that had it unbleeped. Totally fine. Uh, Jill says, "Ever since you played Sweet Dreams from Aviators, I became a fan. So I'd love for him to get more exposure. Zombie." gives me chills like the original and holding out for a hero is pretty cheesy for any in the middle it'd be great to hear god hunter that's one of my favorites no date for playing it no occasion just love of music signed jill i'm sad there's no birthday i got a new birthday clip do you want to hear it just as a little test because or no do you want to do you want to leave the suspense and we play it uh the next time we have a birthday it's no i mean if we get a birthday soon i'm just itching all right. All right, play it. All right, here's it. what you can expect for the new birthdays coming for 2023. Let's party. That's it. <laughs> That's the 2023 That's, birthday jingle, okay? Every time you think it's it's uh, it's over, there's something new to it. And you, yeah, it's a good payoff at the end. Uh, all right, sorry. Continue with your non-event uh, dedication here. Okay, sounds good. Here's the Aviators from the 2021 album Hymns of the Dark and a cover of the Cranberries, Zombie. Oh, that's great. I'm still sad that lead singer passed of cancer. That sucked. Oh, um, but I love that song, and I'm Kate sure the Marie cover's Orton. great, too. Yeah. So here it is. The We're going to play it. Yep. We'll be back tomorrow with a Thursday edition of the show. I don't think Wendy's here. She's got she's out here for a death of a friend, uh, someone in their family. So she's all oh. traveling and all over the place. So I don't think she's around. Okay. Maybe if she's not, uh, we may she's do not, call now, or we could get Bobby now. in yeah, or something. Exactly. I don't know. We'll, we'll... Ask us anything and ask us about the way I say yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, is that it? Is it that? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Because there's no robot thing. No. Hold on. We're playing the original of that that I recorded all those years ago. And let's see if that's what they mean. Hold on. Okay. So Rib Ibbit says, yeah. No, wait. It's a killer. It's a man eater. No, that's not you. Uh, I get. No. Ah. No, that's you making a noise. <laughs> it's me stretching. I lied. No. <laughs> oh, I'm doing a bag of salad. Uh, I can't find it. Oh, well, that's all right. Here. That's not it. All right. Well, anyway, whatever it is, I, we need to know. That's going to do it for us. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back tomorrow for a brand new show. Thanks for being here. We'll see you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great Dunaway left. Bobby uh, says he'll be available tomorrow if we want to do his signed segment uh, tomorrow. Yeah, let's do that, uh, Bobby. Tuesday. Go ahead and slot it in because I'm pretty sure she's out. If that changes, I'll let you know, yeah. but I think Wendy's out. I like um, it.